UPS man yesterday gave me a present. Well, a present I got myself. The new gent saw is from Veritas. I got both the crosscut and rip for a portable toolkit I'm putting together so I can do some demos at fairs and shows. So I thought I'd give you all a quick first impression in comparison to the other Veritas joinery saws I have. Supposedly, the original idea for gent saws was that they were quality, smaller versions of professional tools that a gentleman would use for artisan-type projects. Nowadays, the term seems to refer to straight-handled small saws used for small joinery, such as dovetailing. So you know where I'm coming from in this review? I should tell you that my first joinery saw was a crown gents. I'd seen lots of instructors using them and was actually told by one that they were a great buy. Only later did I learn that most people grind off the teeth and cut their own. Many also turn a new handle. Basically, they change everything but the brass back and sprung steel. I hated mine. It literally drove me to try Japanese saws, which are truly wonderful right out of the box. They're inexpensive to buy, easy to learn, and wondrous to use. But I started having issues with the teeth getting ripped off when I progressed to harder woods. I realized for the price of all the blades I'd have to routinely buy for my Dazuki, I could have get a high-end saw that would last a lifetime. So I did some research, and the new Veritas Ducktail saws were getting really good reviews, and I could buy a set of three for the price of one high-end. They are designed for American hardwoods, but use Japanese-style teeth geometry, even though they are used on the push stroke, and can be resharpened. Then a few months later, after I bought my dovetails, uh, they came out with a set of carcass saws that had a steal of an introductory price. So I have the complete set of Veritas English-style push saws with the pistol grips. So as you listen to my review, understand that I've only used these saws and have never tried the high-end saws such as Lee Nielsen's, Winslow, or Bad Axe. With that said, after a few days of use, I really, and I mean really, like these new gent saws. They come to you nicely wrapped uh, with bubble wrap and they have some oil on the blades that the instructions tell you to go ahead and wipe off right off the bat. The instructions also tell you that you need to stone the blades. Now I recommend you kind of try them out first because on some of the other ones I bought, I didn't stone them and they worked perfectly fine. Uh, but basically the stoning is just making one swipe on your uh, water stones or whatever you use to sharpen just to take the burr off the edge. You have to be very careful though to not take away too much set on the teeth. In much of this article I'm directly comparing the rip gents to the 20 point rip pistol grip from Veritas because the cutting performance of the blade should be comparable. I'll also bring up the crown in a small Dezuku I own. I believe it's a Z. Uh, to illustrate some design elements. Now the first thing you'll notice about these gent saws is how light they are. I'm assuming this is attributed to the back being smaller in height, width, and length. Plus that there's less meat in the handle. Still it's surprising. Weight in a saw like this does affect cutting. The lighter it is, the more your wrist has to apply the pressure. The balance is such that its center of gravity is right at the transition to the blade. In comparison, my crown is decidedly more t nose heavy, even though the blade is shorter. Considering that the distance from the tip of the handle to the blade is exactly the same, it illustrates how much heavier brass is compared to the Veritas composite material. The pistol grip is also a lot more nose heavy in comparison, but that is understandable considering his back is at least twice as wide and almost a third taller. In use, I find myself using my pointing finger to apply sawing pressure once I got to cutting. On a long day, this could be tiring. With the pistol grip, I never really notice needing to apply this pressure because I'm using the larger muscles of my forearms. I will say that, since it is so light at the nose, it sure was easy to start the cut. Whereas the pistol grip, many times I lift it so slightly to relieve some of the toe's weight to start the cut. So I'm concluding that the lighter back was a design consideration to aid a beginner joiner since starting the cut is easier and it's just kind of natural that when you want to cut more, you push more. In comparison to my crown and Dezuki, the blade is longer. 
but it isn't as long as the pistol grip. Personally, I would have liked the blade to have been the same length as a pistol grip because I did inadvertently pop out of the kerf a few times. This is only because I'm already used to the length of the pistol grip and shouldn't be a concern for most people. The depth of the blade is realistically close enough to the pistol variation that it shouldn't be a factor in making a decision between the two. Yes, technically the pistol is a bit more, but the back has a taper to it whereas the gents does not. A typical small Dazuki has a much more dramatic taper. I mention that because for ripping something like a small tenon, the gents is much more capable than a small Dazuki. One thing I did notice in comparing the gents and the pistol is that the side of the blade on the gents appears to be ground at a higher grit. I'm not sure if this makes any performance difference since supposedly the steel is the same width. It's just an observation. Now I read that supposedly the teeth have a little Japanese geometry to them to help make smooth cuts, but in practice I'm not so sure because, and I'm talking specifically here about the rip saw, it cuts much faster than my small Dazuki did, yet didn't handle small cross cuts well. This isn't a big deal if you get the set of gents because you will have the cross cut saw, but it is consideration if you are only getting one. I've seen for years in demos that people use their dovetail saws in minor cross cutting situations because the teeth are so close together. An example of this would be cutting out the waist on the side of a dovetail. But in the few times I tried this with the rip version of the gents, I really could feel it chewing its way through instead of slicing. And the results were rough. It'll do it, but having used the crosscut version, I can tell you it doesn't do it well. You'll probably end up cleaning the edges with a chisel if you're going for optimal cosmetic results. Now it isn't a concern if you're going to get both a rip and crosscut. I mention this because my small Dazuki could always handle both of these cuts reasonably well, except extremely slow. The negative was that it was so much slower in the rip and occasionally I'd pop a tooth in the cross cuts, especially when I went with more American hardwoods. The handle design of the gents is my favorite aspect of the tool. It just feels great. And personally, I like the looks. The transition between the handle, blade, and back is smooth, which allows for many different ways of holding the saw. You can hold it properly to start the cut, then transition it to your palm to add some more power or even use it as a marking tool by moving your hand over the blade. I think it's the best aspect of the tool. Strangely, because the transition between the handle and back is so nice, it gives it a little higher quality feel than the pistol grip tools because there's a bit of a lip between the handle and the back of four out of five of my pistol grips. It's not noticeable until you put it next to the really finely finished gent saw. I also think that the handle design is also why this is best for someone who is not going to spend half the day with his saw in their hand. It's just the nature of gent saw. In order to use it properly, you need to cant your wrist and you must squeeze the handle to use it, otherwise it slips out. If you're just cutting a box or two, it isn't noticeable. But I could see that the more natural position of the pistol grip which allows you to hold the tool at a proper angle without canting your wrist and doesn't require you to hold it in order to push it, will be more comfortable in heavy use. As nice as the handle is, it just can't escape that it's a straight handle. I said at the beginning that I really like this saw, and it's true. I'm glad I bought it, even though I already have comparable pistol versions. I mentioned earlier, I like a longer blade and that personally I like it to be a little bit heavier on the toe, but I appreciate they, they are just less bulky. It's going to work great in my toolbox and I have a sneaking suspicion that this thing is easier to learn on than a pistol grip. It's just less intimidating and more intuitive. I definitely consider both of these heirloom tools meant to be used forever. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe and tell a friend. Oh, and if you own one of these saws, please feel free to contribute in the comments and tell me about your opinion of it. And please remember, it's always worth the effort to learn, create, and share with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.